One of the biggest heresies I run into in the comments section is the one that denies the deity of Christ. So we're going to look at five scriptures where Jesus explicitly equates himself with God the Father. Hey, what's up, party people? I'm Brad Large. This is my channel, Reclaim Reformation, where we strive to reform our vocations, our families, and our churches for the glory of God. Look, it's straight up a heresy to deny the Trinity. I said it. <gasps> it was such a common heresy that the early church fathers wanted to ensure that people were not led astray by this false doctrine. <gasps> really, when you think about it, the nature of God is the most important thing to get right, because if you mar the image of God in any way during worship, you're, you end up worshiping a false God. That's bad. In fact, diluting or denying the deity of Christ is a core tenet of false religions like the Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, and Unitarians. To make sure that people understood this core doctrine, early church fathers affirmed the belief in creeds. The Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, the Athanasian Creed, all of which upheld and affirmed the Trinitarian understanding of God. Jesus himself is the basis for the teaching of the Trinity, and logically when you deny the Trinity, you open up can after can of worms, theologically and doctrinally. And full disclosure, I didn't know much about why the Trinity was so important until I started to get so many comments about how I was wrong for saying Jesus was God. So someone who's paying attention in this video will notice I'm only addressing the divinity of Christ and barely talk about the Holy Spirit part of it. So that's true. It is too big of a topic for me to cover right now, but I'm kind of working up to it. So I will be covering five stories where Jesus calls himself God or equates himself directly with God. Each one gives us a piece to chew on, and with each one I'll show how they all relate, so stick with me here. But the TLDR is that Jesus called himself God many times, and that leaves us with a choice. Either faith in Christ and his word, or to understand Jesus to be a lunatic or a liar. So number one, the first is in John 8, when Jesus says that before Abraham was, I am. John 8, verse 58 and 59. Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. The two points of this story that I think are most interesting are that Jesus calls himself the proper name of God and that people want to stone him for it. So we have clear evidence that Jesus is doing something intentional here. And we'll see this in other stories as well. Jesus calls himself by the name of Yahweh, God the Father. There's no denying it. And all the Jewish people around Jesus knew what he had just done. So if we want to deny the divine nature of Jesus, then we have to call him a liar. If he wasn't a liar, was he a lunatic? Does he have the authority to call himself by God's official name or not? We'll see just how important this name is in uh, one of the other examples in this video as well. So example number two, Matthew 14, when Jesus walks on water. So in Matthew chapter 14, verse 27, But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. So just like in the previous example, Jesus calls himself, I am. Now, you're going, Brad, I didn't see I am in there. I use the ESV translation here because I didn't want people to accuse me of cheating or cherry picking translations. Some of the other versions translate this better, like the NLT. The ESV says, it is I. But this again is actually an example of Jesus saying, I am. And is translated that way in other Bibles. Jesus again used the proper name of God. And this story goes a step further. Jesus calms the wind and the waves. We see throughout Genesis God's sovereign control over creation. He made it, he owns it, he controls it. And Jesus exercises that dominion. We also see it as a common theme in the Psalms. And my favorite, uh, one of my favorite scriptures from Job is Job 38, 1 through 3. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Dress for action like a man. I will question you and you make it known to me. God goes on to express so many examples of his own sovereign power and tender loving care over the entirety of creation. God is in control of his creation. It goes on in Matthew 14 verses 32 and 33 to show us an example of Jesus using that authority. And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. So we also see the testimony of the apostles that they believed in this moment that Jesus was in fact divine. Example number three is in John 6. Jesus was on a roll in the Gospel of John. He made a lot of claims about his divine nature, like this little gem. John 6, verses 53 through 56. So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. 
For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. Life comes from God. Jesus is saying he is the source of life. He's also calling himself the son of man, which harkens back to the prophet Daniel talking about the Messiah to come. And he calls that Messiah the son of man. So again, we see Jesus using extremely clear language to tell those around him that he is divine in nature. Jesus is saying that the Messiah must be divine to be life-giving. Can anyone but God give life? Jesus is equating himself with God by saying he is life-giving could be debated on whether or not the Son of Man uh, label means that Jesus is divine. This isn't a slam dunk by itself, according to my understanding. However, if it means that the Christ is not divine, then that's very problematic for many derived theological and doctrinal points. I also love this story for what happens next. In John 6, 66 and 67, After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. So Jesus said to the twelve, Do you want to go away as well? Jesus knows that his teaching is harsh. He watches many people walk away from him, and he even asked his disciples if they want to keep going. In fact, they do want to keep going, all the way to our next example, number four. Jesus is praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, and the soldiers come looking for Jesus. Jesus asks who they're looking for. John 18, verses 5 and 6. They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. The name of God is so revered that everyone in the garden went prostrate to show respect, even Judas. Jesus calls himself the name of God again, and again we see everyone around him recognize the name and react. So is Jesus a liar? Ultimately, they do kill him for blasphemy. They kill the Son of God, the Christ, on blasphemy charges. Which takes us to example number five. After he's arrested, Jesus is taken to court to be questioned in Mark 14, verses 61 through 64. But he remained silent and made no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his garments and said, What further witnesses do we need? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? And they all condemned him as deserving death. So here we see Jesus use not one and not two, but three different names to call himself God. He says, I am. We've talked about that one several times. We've talked about the son of man. That's label number two. But the third one is power, a separate name for God. Do you notice how it's capitalized? Because God's proper name was so sacred, the Jewish people came up with other names for God to use instead of I am. And this was one of them. So time and again, we see that a major theme throughout Jesus's ministry was his rightful claim that he was in fact the son of God and equal to God the Father. That's the point many people try to argue, the equal part. They want to say that Jesus was not equal with God the Father. And the three arguments I hear most often are that if it's in the Bible, then why are you relying on man-made creeds? And this is the dumbest one in my opinion, because if you say, I only believe things that are in the Bible, well, guess what, doofus? You just affirmed a creed that isn't in the Bible. And the next one is, so you just believe what most people believe? And this is actually a fair question. I'll give you that. But that's not ultimately why I believe it. I believe that because God gave me faith and a church tradition that goes all the way back to Jesus himself, as well as his word. And when I studied it and and asked questions, I, I started to understand it properly. And lastly, the Trinity is found nowhere in the Bible. I hear this from Unitarians a lot. And some things that are in the Bible are God's lasting and eternal judgment. Do you deny that there's lasting and eternal judgment? What about the deity of Christ? Do you deny that? So if you do, I don't really think you have a leg to stand on here logically or scripturally. But I will say this. Most people have stood firmly in their convictions, which I appreciate, and mostly remained respectful with very few exceptions. So that's awesome. I would like to offer an olive branch to those that are well-meaning and say, well, I think you're wrong and that I think that this is in fact heresy. I appreciate you being willing to make comments, interact, and try to express why it is that you believe what you believe. 